no? You are uh, so having a lower R square value uh, while doing a correlation coefficient is a clear indication that you no, know, the you know you may not be able to uh, impact the problem uh, to the required level. The gap in performance may not you know get uh, fulfilled. So see to that your R square is at least eighty percent and above ninety percent is really good. Right. And then we talked about the regression. So regression is nothing but modeling the relationship between X and Y using an appropriate equation. Your equation can be a linear. Your equation can be a non-linear. Can be non-linear means you know, higher, higher or higher degree. The first degree equation is linear and other degree equations are non-linear. Because when you visualize, you won't be able to see straight line. Please note, if you are seeing a straight line, then, you know, then your design of experiments will require only lesser number of trials to understand you know, the relationship between X and Y, and then you can also optimize. However, if the relationship is non-linear, then in addition to considering the endpoints, you will have to consider including center points also, the intermediate points also. If you want to draw a line, two points are enough. I hope all of you agree with me, isn't it? When I show you two points, you can just put a scale and then draw. But when you want a curve, Will you be able to draw the curve in just two, two points? It's not possible, isn't it? You need intermediate points and then only the profile can be drawn. So accordingly, the number of uh, trials, number of experimentation will increase if your uh, variable, the X variable, has got a nonlinear relationship with your uh, Y variable. And nonlinear means it can be quadratic, a second degree equation, it can be cubic, a third degree equation, or it can be of higher order also, right? And you really don't have to worry too much about it because there are a lot of calculation involved but you have the mini tab, just feed the data and that will throw away the regression equation. But what is important is you should be able to understand you know, the uh, meaning of the terms in your regression equation. There is a regression coefficient, there is a constant term, right? If there is only one X variable, then one regression coefficient will be there. If there are two variables, there will be two regression coefficient and so on, right? And if there is only one variable involved, that is called a simple regression. When multiple variables are involved, that is called you no know, multiple regression, multiple linear, multiple uh, you no know, non-linear, you know, different types exist, right? And then the regression coefficient will help you to understand the direction of relationship as well as the strength of the relationship. If I make uh, one unit change in my x variable, how many units change I can expect in the y variable? If the coefficient is you know, uh, 0.45, it means 0.45 units will increase in Y. And it may not happen very exactly, but approximately, right? On an average, if you increase X variable by one unit, the Y variable will increase by 0.45 unit. So this knowledge will be very, very helpful when you are actually trying to develop a solution, isn't it? You Whether to increase the X or decrease the X. When you have to increase the X, to what extent you must increase? So you get a you know, clear idea of you know, uh, developing a solution to the problem. Nothing but you are assigning a value to your X variable. That is called a solution in statistics. That is called a treatment, right? And uh, also, uh, and also the uh, there is a constant term. So that constant term, you know, uh, is nothing but the y-intercept. That's what we understood. And uh, we will also try to derive the regression equation today by doing some experiment by collecting some data and then once the data is in our hand, we'll do all these things calculation on our own without depending on Minitab. And then we will try to find out the effect an X variable has got on Y variable, right? What is the effect? We'll quantify. Okay, so that we will do. And in fact, yesterday we also talked about hypothesis testing introduction where we understood hypothesis is nothing but any statement is hypothesis. Any statement is hypothesis. If I say you are a rich person, that's an hypothesis. That's all. If I say you are, you are, you are, you know, uh, your uh, skin color is uh, black, then that's an hypothesis. So any statement is an hypothesis. Your statement can be a null hypothesis, can be alternate hypothesis. If you make a statement in such a way that you no, know, an uh, impact is communicated, then it is alternate hypothesis. If you frame a statement in such a way that and there is no impact between the you know, two things you are talking about, right? So uh, that is called statement of innocence and mathematically statement of equality, right? And statement of no difference. These are all null hypothesis. Statement of 
inequality greater than less than or you know statement of impact and the statement of guiltiness or alternate hypothesis right most of the time when during your brainstorming discussion and the experts opinion will be of alt alternate hypothesis only you need to be very very careful whatever statement they are telling they will say sir the temperature is the no is the culprit you need to optimize the temperature so they are doubting on the temperature so what is that statement that statement is alternate hypothesis you must take the opposite of it and then write it as the null hypothesis and then try to reject it if you are able to reject the null hypothesis then you can agree with the expert's opinion otherwise you can always differ from the expert uh, just because he is an expert no you don't have to agree with him right you can do a small uh, study and then you can validate uh, information for yourself so that you know you, your decisions can be more and more effective and of course uh, when you are really wanted to make changes in the process the information must be validated the claim must be validated the hypothesis must be validated and please note in hypothesis testing we are only taking decision on null hypothesis not on alternate hypothesis we have been repeatedly telling right we are only taking a decision on null hypothesis not on alternate hypothesis you can consider either a person as innocent or not innocent that's all you cannot say he is a criminal isn't it so because of the doubt we are considering a person as not innocent right and then if you really wanted to say he is a criminal then further investigation is required so we are only you know still in the you know beginning stage of the investigation we need to understand if you consider the police department how they are investigating you no know, they go they, they dig everything and then finally you know finally conclude after 3 years that you know the person uh, is uh, really the uh, uh, culprit or not same way this hypothesis testing is only the first step of you know digging deeper first we rejected the innocence still what is your responsibility you have to prove the crime also isn't it you need to prove the alternate also but most of the time when innocence is rejected most of the time that person should be the you know a culprit isn't it or that factor should be the uh, culprit factor or critical factor we call it so little assumption we are all, here also we are making we need to understand if you if you wanted to rule out that assumption also then what should you do you must proceed with the next stage what will be the next stage design of experiments where you do you know you do a extensive study to understand the effect the x variable has got on y variable in hypothesis testing your study is not extensive you just took some you know limited number of samples and then you understood but you but you you have, you have seen to that you no know, your study is at least sufficient and appropriate to to conclude on the null hypothesis but if you really wanted to conclude on the alternate hypothesis then you have to study extensively and that will be called what the design of experiments right and then you talked about a test of means what are the test of means here what do i mean by mean mean is nothing but the statistics you are trying to validate is average how many tests you have studied you studied is a test you studied a t test and then you studied uh, i mean is a it is a test you have one sample is it one sample t and then you have two sample t and you also have anova you clearly know no the situations for is it t as well as two sample t and anova right and your data must be continuous your data must be continuous that means patient is a known population that means the population parameters are known then you must prefer to do is a test if they are unknown t test yes. is a test will be more accurate than the t test so whenever there is a scope for is a test you must prefer you must prefer to do the is a test only and then uh, two sample t test when you are comparing between two factors two samples two machines two suppliers you know two <coughs> operators whatever it is whatever the situation right or uh, two teams are playing each other then this is nothing but a two sample t test right now i can divide all of you into two groups and then run a competition here then it can it can immediately become a two sample t test provided i should measure the performance in the form of a continuous data maybe the time you consume to complete a task assigned if i compare and then i wanted to find out which team is really better what do you think you might expect me to run two three trials isn't it you don't get convinced with the result of just one trial why do you why do you expect two three trials because you want a higher level of confidence in the decision you are going to make whether team a is better or team b is better 
So this is what we are actually doing in hypothesis testing also. We take multiple samples and then rely on the statistics, not on one single observation. Right? We, take, we take multiple tests, I mean multiple sample, calculate the average, and then we take decision on the average. When we are taking the decision on the average, the amount of variation will definitely cause uncertainty in your decision. And that is why, you know, we, we measure that uncertainty. That, that uncertainty is captured in the form of p-value. And the permissible uncertainty is 5%. What is that we call it? Level of significance. In other words, it is called type 1 error. So that will be limited to 5%. So p-value is a tool which is called probability of significance. I have made uh, three videos on p-value in my channel. Probably those of you interested, you can uh, go through all the three videos, maybe 10 to 15 minutes each. And then you clearly understand what is p-value, how to calculate p-value for continuous data, how to calculate p-value for discrete data. Then you are master of the tool, right? So p-value can replace your you know, burden of calculating z score, calculating t-score, calculating chi-square score. There are many, many scores, calculating f-score. So all these distribution, you really don't have to worry. Simply look for the p-value. If the p-value is less than 5%, what do you understand? That's the situation. You can reject the null. Why are you rejecting the null when p-value is less than 5? You are sure that the uncertainty that may exist in your decision while rejecting the null is definitely limited to 5%. That means you are rejecting it with the 95% confidence that the null hypothesis is wrong. Clear, right? So that is the situation, right? So test of uh, mean and then test of uh, proportion. <coughs> when it comes to test of proportion, you have one proportion two proportion and chi-square. And when, uh, when you are comparing the proportion of two groups or two samples, that is two proportion test, for more than, more than two groups, it is called uh, the chi-square test, right? Hope you had one exercise on that also. And ANOVA, ANOVA is like comparing more than two groups. It can be three, it can be four, or it can be any number, right? And uh, ANOVA uh, uses the variance, right? And uh, we will probably in the design of while uh, doing, while talking about the design of experiments, we will also definitely cover up the ANOVA also. So this is what you learned. And one important uh, hint I wanted to give it to all of you. When you are studying the mean, it is called test of mean. When you are doing a test of mean, it is very important you do the test of variance first. Before doing test of mean, you must do test of variance. Because when you are comparing two groups having, you know, different levels of variation, are you doing a fair comparison? You can't, you know, conduct boxing for a 10-year boy with, you know, another for a 30-year boy, 30-year, uh, you know, male. Is it, is it a fair comparison? Definitely no, isn't it? So when you are comparing two groups, you need to really understand what is the amount of variation in your uh, data pertaining to the first group what is the amount of variation in your data pertaining to the second group? That information also required. So that means test of mean creates necessity for test of variance. Test of variance between two groups is called, you know, F test. Test of variance between two groups is called F test. You should at least know whether the variances are equal or unequal. Variances are equal means you, should, you, may, you may not be able to reject the null. That is the null hypothesis, isn't it? Statement of equality is null. If the variation, variations, variances are unequal, that means no, you will be you will be able to reject the null while conducting the test. And no, don't worry on all the calculation and steps because you really don't have to know each and every calculation. But uh, there are certain formulas, right? But you can always rely on uh, templates and uh, B tab. Feed the data. Just know where is that option available. Go for the F test. You get a picture of no whether variances are equal or unequal. Accordingly, some changes will be there in the formulas you what you are using in your test of mean while calculating the judge score or F score or T score or whatever, right? So that's the difference. So what, what is the new learning here? Before doing test of mean, we must do test of, test of variance. The variance test is between two groups. What is the test called? F, F test. test. If it is more than two groups, that is called no Bartlett test. B A R T L E W T Bartlett test. Another equivalent test is Levine's test, L-E-V-E-N-E, -E -E, right? So these are all available in Minitab. So before comparing the mean, please compare the variance. Get a picture of whether the variances are equal or unequal. Again, 
before doing this variance study you must do one more thing what is that you should know whether your data is normal or abnormal isn't it because all these decisions are taken based on the assumption that your data is normal am i correct or not so whether your data is normal or not that also you must do a study that is also a type of hypothesis testing every time you ask a question it is nothing but an hypothesis test right so for when you when you are studying the normality what do you think your null hypothesis could be data is normal data is not normal which is null hypothesis here data is normal very good right yeah. statement of normality generally data are expected to follow normal distribution only so your null hypothesis is data is normal and there is a test for it anderson darling test there are very very simple test you plot a histogram and rely on your eye look at the histogram and judge on it isn't it that is one way you can test the normality but this is less accurate because human eyes you know it has got its own limitation that's why we have statistical formulas so there are another other tests like you know uh, uh, in the log normal sheet you can you can plot a graph and then you can see you can check whether you know your uh, your points are you no know, uh, coming uh, falling in a uh, along a straight line right and another uh, minitab method is anderson darling test you just uh, feed the data go to minitab create a graphical summary every time you create a graphical summary you know what is graphical summary you get a histogram isn't it we have we did that <clears throat> the on top of the graphical summary itself you will see the first line line right, which is nothing but anderson darling test that will also have the p value so what is your expectation here your data should be normal if your data is normal then you should not be able to reject the null if you don't want to reject the null what should be your p value should be if you don't want to reject the null statement what should be your p value greater than 0.95 very good it should be greater than 0.05 look for a p value more than 5% to to claim that your data is normal right so this is the sequence of hypothesis testing when you are dealing with continuous data continuous data only these conditions are required variance test and then normality test all right the uh, variance test that is a f test the data is for the uh, continuous data or discrete sir or for both continuous data only continuous data for discrete data we we go with the proportion test all right so this is what in essence you have studied and then uh, when it comes to anova or any test what are you studying you are studying the effect of a factor on your y variable effect of a factor on your output did you discuss anything about interaction yesterday yes so what is interaction effect so if you uh, have two factors okay uh, on a for a given study and then the uh, when the two factors interact uh, among themselves and that becomes an interaction effect no? for example you know temperature and pressure <clears throat> very good very good so for example now i am just talking to all of you and you are able to hear me properly right and the listening is you know is very good you are able to the full uh, modulation and my voice is very clear to all of you suppose if a song is played in between what will happen to you know your uh, the uh, hearing definitely it will get affected isn't it so when a song is not played in parallelly whatever i speak you can fully hear but when a song is also played parallelly you will only hear half of my voice am i correct or not so where, where i actually i was speaking in the same manner only but first time you are able to hear fully but next time you are able to receive only half of it but where what happened to the remaining half it was you no know, killed by the song am i correct so this is called you no know, interaction effect you cannot simply conclude that when your factor is you know set like this this will be the output you should look for interaction also the effect of a factor might get changed in the presence you know under the influence of another factor which is also having impact on your y always your y will have you know will get influenced by many factors isn't it so when you have two factor there are two effects definitely possible one is effect from a 
another one is effect from b if a and b are not interacting then there are only two effects whatever you see you can you can take decisions on that but when the factors are interacting then in addition to the two main effects which we understood right now effect of a and effect of b there will be interaction effect also right there will be interaction effect also understand and let us take you know a simple example all of you know sunil gavaskar right so cricket player batsman he opens the innings for india how is you know his batting is it very good yes or no batting is good sir batting is good can he can he help india win the match probably yes or no okay is another match definitely okay oh, definitely is a good batsman right he can definitely contribute to the winning number one and next kapil dev you all know kapil dev also right yes this is his batting performance you all know his captaincy and then his bowling but now i am asking about his batting performance how is he you know uh, uh, 